ओम विश्व विष्णुर्वत्कारो भूत भव्य भवत्भु भूताभूत भाव भूतात्मा भूत भावना वी आर बैक विद विष्णु शास्त्र नाम प्ले लिस्ट एंड वी हैव रीच टेक्स नंबर फोर्टीन let me offer my respectful obeisances to the supreme personality of god who per- pervades the entire universe that is the meaning of the word vishnu one who pervades the entire universe he is worshiped in the vedic sacrifices vashat karo he is eternally the supreme controller in all phases of time including past present and future bhuta bhavya bhavat prabhu he is the creator of the cosmic manifestation bhuta krit and he maintains it as well bhuta brit towards other bhuta krit bhuta brit bhavo right he is the ma- master of all spiritual and material potencies bhava he is the creator of all living entities bhutatma and the well wisher who promotes their welfare bhuta bhavana so the word bhuta is used here many times you see bhuta bhavya bhavat prabhu bhuta krit bhuta bhrit bhavo bhutatma bhuta bhavana <laughs> so generally people think the word bhuta means some ghost or some uh, some spirits or atma or something like this okay om vishwam vishnur vashatkaro so the word vishnu is used here uh, which means vishma is speaking about that personality who is present uh, one who pervades and permeates the entire universe so this is very interesting although bhishma pitama is speaking about krishna now uh, krishna is sitting there in front uh, standing uh, with all the pandavas and kunti draupadi and everybody is there they are listening to bhishma in his last days but yet uh, bhishma is very careful with his words <laughs> bhishma is repeatedly reminding all of us who krishna is so he is not just saying oh krishna is there you know you are this you are that he is not saying like this you see how bhishma is starting if you see the chronology uh, the order you will be amazed actually so now he has started speaking so in the previous verse we had seen yani namani gaunani vikhyatani mahatmana rishi vi parigitani tami vakshami bhutaye in order to attain the supreme goal of life i shall now chant the celebrated holy names of lord vishnu great sages glorify these holy names which describe the lord's transcendental qualities and past times so from now he has started speaking so here the game begins the vishnu sasnam starts technically so what he is saying here vish om vishwam vishnu vashatkaro is very careful you see he is saying let me offer my respectful obeisances to the supreme personality of god who pervades the entire universe supreme personality of godhead who pervades the entire universe so that means he is starting the pretext is that i am talking of that person who is all pervading and then later on he speaks about krishna all right uh, so because uh, sometimes when uh, you will see in kali yuga people they will talk of ram or krishna you know they will they will talk about them as some ordinary human beings you know? uh, recently i had seen uh, somebody was uh comparing uh, ram with you know some other king of this world you know from the west you know how similarities they have what kind of similarities that well um that's not a very good approach because when you are doing that you are downgrading ram to a king even if he was maryada purushottam or whatever but ultimately he is not a king you see he is god himself he is vishnu himself so you um, know there are there has been many great kings in this world like yudhishthir maharaj then we have the example of prithu maharaj then you know ambarish maharaj then dhruva maharaj you know so many great personalities we have dashrath maharaj but we do not worship them we glorify them we exemplify their characters and we try to follow in their footsteps but they are not 
Ram. Ram is born only and he is Vishnu himself. That is why Ram is worshipped, right? The others are not worshipped, although they may have very similar traits in their behavior as a king, but they can never be worshipped because they are normal human beings. Okay. Of course, they are not normal uh, in the sense like you and me. <laughs> they are extraordinary human beings, but still they are living beings. All right? So that is why we do not worship them. But Ram is worshipable because he is Vishnu himself and he exemplifies the traits of a human being. He behaves as if he is a human being. There is a word as if. But he doesn't become a human being. Krishna says in Gita, na, Janma karama chame divyam evam yo vetti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naiti mameti sojuna. That my janma karma, my janma, my birth, karma means actions are divine. Janma karama chame divyam evam yo vetti tattvataha. One who understands this truth, naiti mameti sojuna. Punar Janma Naiti means the person does not take birth again. So uh, Vishnu does not take birth, you know, like Ram literally does not take birth from Kaushalya's and Kaushalya's womb. Krishna does not literally take birth from Devaki's womb. They appear actually. Okay? Appear means the person is already there, but they have just appeared. <laughs> But for you and me, it's not like this. We, we cannot claim that we have appeared. You know? We take birth. So for human beings, birthday is celebrated. And for avatars, we do not celebrate birthday. Okay? We celebrate appearance day because they do not take birth. Because taking birth means being pushed into uh, another body because of our sinful reactions. That's what it means to take birth. So we have taken birth. You have taken birth. I have taken birth. Why? to suffer for our sinful karma and some level of materialistic pleasure. <laughs> All right. So, Vishma is very careful in uh, bringing down the things, you see. He is saying in the beginning only. Uh, he is saying, Vishwam Vishnu Vashat Karo. And then he is saying Vashat Karo. Why? Because uh, Vishnu is always worshipped in the Vedic literatures. In every page of the Vedic literatures. All right. In fact, Krishna also says in the Gita, Vedescha sarver aham eva vedyo, Vedanta kritveda videva chaha, which means I am the originator, I am the, he says I am the source and I am the compiler and I am the goal of the Vedas. Yes, so basically, he is the end result of the Veda. So many times people, they will uh, read a lot of scriptures. Have you seen? Mm, like big, big scriptures, you know, it's like they will read. Rig Ved, Sam Ved, Yajur Ved, Athar Ved, they will read, you know, Upanishads, they will read Sutras, they will chant Mantras, they will go do the Mudras, they will do Tantras, you know, they will do Yajyas, everything they will do. And then at the end, you ask them, all right, so what is your conclusion? My dear sir, my dear madam, and they're like, ah, we don't know actually, you know, what's going on, who is God, and you know, we don't know, it's very confusing. So, Therefore, uh, Vishma is also, so Vishma is saying that Om Vishwam Vishnu, then he is saying Vasatkar, which means I am also referring to this personality who not only pervades the entire universe, but who is also worshipped in the Vedic literatures. All right? In fact, the Vedas, the Vedic literatures have come from uh, Lord Vishnu only because the Srimad Bhagavatam says, you know, Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavat Pranitam, that Many times people get confused. You know, what is dharma? He thinks this is dharma. She thinks this is dharma. You know, politician thinks that is dharma. I think this is dharma. No, we, you or me or some mortal human being, they cannot decide what dharma is. Dharma, the, the devatas cannot decide dharma. The rishis cannot decide dharma. People think that rishis have given the books of dharma. No, they have not given. Who has given dharma? Dharma to sakchat bhagavat pranitam, which means Dharma is given by God Himself. Bhagavat Pranitam. It does not say Dharmam to Sakchat Aham Pranitam, which means I give you know, Dharmam to Sakchat Rishi Pranitam. It doesn't say that Rishis have given. No. Rishis have presented it in a way that we can understand, right? By adding whatever they think is relevant for the contemporary scenario. But they have, that's not something which they've cooked up from their side, right? This is a very big misconception. 
So, Dharmam to Sakshat Bhagavad Parita. This is a very important shloka actually, all right. And then he says, and this is there, Vasatkaro, this is very famous. This shloka is done, Yam Brahma Varunendra Rudra Maruta Stunvanti Divya Istavai Vedai Samaga Pashyanti Yama Yogi Noho. Means that, you know, Yamaraj, then Brahma, Indra, Varuna, then Rudra, Rudra Shiva. Divya is the way they are chanting divine uh, hymns. Vedai Samaga, the Vedas, the Sam, they are, they are chanting the hymns. Who? For whom? For some cricketer, for, for some film star, or some you know, Miss Universe or Mr. Universe these days. <laughs> <laughs> or for you know some big bodybuilder who no for Lord Vishnu they are doing stunvanti divyai stavai they are doing stuti all the time all right so he is giving uh, he's uh, he's uh, in reinstantiating all these things all right because somebody may say oh you are speaking about Vishnu Sasnam you are speaking about Vishnu but who is Vishnu all right they may ask this question then he says, Vishnu is the one who pervades the entire universe, then one who is worshipped in the Vedic sacrifices. He is eternally the supreme controller in all phases of time, including past, present and future. Bhuta, Bhavya, Bhavat, Prabhu. So, either it's the past, present or future. He is always the controller. Even Brahmaji says this. Ishwara, Parama, Krishna, Satchit, Ananda, Vigraha, Anadir, Adir, Govinda, Sarva, Karana, Karanam. And even Krishna says this, you know, like he says, Bhukta Ram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram Suvidam Sarva Bhutanam Gyato Amam Shanti Mruchati. In, in that also Krishna says. And Krishna also says in the Gita, na, I, I, I know all the past and everything basically present. Right? So who is this Vishnu? He is the one who pervades the entire universe. Then one who is worshipped in, uh, in all the Vedic sacrifices. And in fact, when they do yagya, the purpose of yagya is that Vishnu appears, right? Fire sacrifices when you do not all yagya, certain yagyas especially. You know, so when Vishnu would appear, that would mean that the yagya is successful. And if Vishnu didn't appear, the yagya has failed, all right? He is eternally the supreme controller in all phases of time, including past, present and future. He is the creator of the cosmic manifestation, Bhuta Krit. And he maintains it as well, Bhuta Bhrit. So, uh, in India, people have this misconception that, you know, uh, Brahma is the creator and Vishnu is the maintainer, which is true at one sense. But if you understand at a deeper level, Brahma is the secondary creator because Brahma himself is created by Lord Vishnu from his navel. Um, Brahmaji appears, all right? So, Brahma is the first created living being. Brahma is a post, actually which can be occupied by any living being, right? You can become Brahma, I can become Brahma. They say that if one does 1000 Ashwamedhya Gyas, then the person becomes Brahma actually. And if a person does 100 Ashwamedhya Gyas, the person becomes Indra actually. So Brahma is a post. Anybody can, uh, can occupy that actually, depending on the level of piety, which, is, uh, which that person has. So he is not only the creator, he is also the maintainer. So Vishnu creates and maintains. He does not create directly, he creates indirectly through Brahma. Okay. And maintainer, he is as well the maintainer because Ishok Nishad also says, you know, Nityo Nityanam Chetanas Chetananam Eho Bahunam Yo Vidadati Kama. All right, this is a very famous shloka from the Ishok Nishad. He is the master of all spiritual and material potencies. Bhava. He is the creator of all living beings, Bhutatma, and the well-wisher who promotes their welfare, Bhuta Bhavanaha. Note, in this commentary, Srila Baldev Vidya Bhushan quotes the description of creation found in the Upanishads. So Kama Yata Bahusyama Prajayaya, Supreme Personality Desired, let me become many, I will manifest the entire creation by my potencies. This is similar to what's there in the Bible, you know, that God said, let there be earth and there was earth. So some, something similar is there in the Bible also, right? So, Balde Vidya Bhushan, as you know, if you have watched the other videos, he's a very great Acharya in the um, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. 
So he quotes this shloka from some Upanishad. I don't know from which Upanishad this is, but this is mentioned. All right. Uh, similar thing is there in the Upanishad, in that shloka which I just quoted uh, recently. So the thing is, uh, many times uh, people want to do a lot of welfare activity. They want to do, you know, a lot of social work and all the big stuff. They think we will change the world. We will uh make uh, big shifts in the society right so the question is how do you do that you can do it there are many ways but the scriptures say the most important way to do it is is to connect that person to god because god is the only one who can best take care of somebody you you may try it if you are a husband you ask yourself you have you might have tried your best to take care of your wife but can you claim that your wife is happy 100%? No, never she will be. If you are a wife, you can ask your husband, am I able to satisfy you 100%? Definitely not. You can ask your children, are they satisfied with you? Never, 100%. What to speak of 100? Even in, Kal in Kaliuga, nobody is satisfied, even 5%. <laughs> They may say we are overall satisfied with the marriage or children or career, but you literally ask them, are you happy? They'll be like, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> That's uh, the characteristic of Kali Yuga. People are not happy. People are having, people, their minds are being tormented by material desires all the time. So therefore, you know, we, either we are married or we are single or even if you want to take care of your parents, you can ask your parents, are you 100% satisfied by my services? Maybe your parents may be old and you are taking care of them, but then can you claim that they are happy to have you as son or a daughter, 100%? Never, never, never. That will never happen. Because we have limitations. Let's accept the fact. But Krishna doesn't have limitations. Vishnu doesn't have limitations. They can they can help you as much as you want. Yes, because that's how they are. <laughs> All right. So therefore, if we really want to help somebody, first we have to help ourselves. We have to get connected to him first. How do you get connected? By reading Vishnu Sasanam, by chanting mantras, by you know, uh, reading texts like uh, the, the Bhagavad Gita and reading Srimad Bhagavatam. All right. And then associating with people. Uh, who are also pursuing a spiritual path in the weekends, taking vegetarian food. Yes, these are ways by which you can do. I mean, these, these are not the only ways. There are many ways, but these are some of the ways which I have told. All right. So the greatest welfare you can do to somebody is to feed their soul, not just feeding their body. If you feed their body, after some time, the body will dwindle and the person will go to another body. But if you help the soul, who is the person themselves, then the person will be liberated from this cycle of birth and death and go back to the spiritual world, never to return back. As Krishna says in the Gita, Yad Gatwana Nivartan Teta Dhamma Paramamama. So that is the greatest welfare activity you can do, apart from doing the materialistic welfare activities. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your watch time. <laughs> and if you have not watched the other videos, please watch it. It's there in this playlist. And you can also watch my Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam playlist. All right. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want to watch other videos similar to this topic, I'll put it here. And if you want a consultation, go to my website down below. All right. Exoticastrology.in. Thank you very much.